Good morning. I greet you, everyone, in the mighty name of Jesus, those who are watching all over the world and YouTube and Facebook platform. And also, I greet all of you in the church in the mighty name of Jesus. So today, before um, going to the word of God, I would like to pray. So join with me. Heavenly Father, once again, we come before you. Thank you for the wonderful day. Thank you for the wonderful message that you are going to speak through me. Holy Spirit, not me, all glory be to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Church, are you happy today? Yes. Okay. So, um, today, um, as I was preparing for the sermon today, so God gave me a topic called, um, it's called omniscient. That means all-knowing God. The topic is omniscient. It's sometimes it's pronounced as sheant, but um, we can say you said sheant as well. So omniscient, it's all-knowing God. So let's turn to John chapter 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one, no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And also join with me to read John chapter 8 verse 32. John chapter 8 verse 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Yes. So there are many attributes and characters about God. Especially today, I'm going to focus on one attribute about God. What is omni describes in biblical way. Omni means, omni is the Latin root meaning gives all. Omni means all. In order to describe about the God's attributes or character, theologians uh, use three important terms. Number one is omnipotence. Uh, means that God is in total control of himself and his creation. And number two, omnipresence means that he is present everywhere. Omnipresence is, is present everywhere and all the time. His presence is not limited by time or space, right? Number three, come to, coming to my topic, omniscient or omniscient means all knowing God, omni means all, science means knowledge. Science means knowledge. When we say that God is omniscient, it means he has perfect knowledge of all things. He does not have to learn anything. He has not forgotten anything. God knows what has happened in your life, what is happening right now in your life, and what is going to happen in the future. Two. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3 says, For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, is a Lord full of knowledge. Mm. In Psalm 139, verse 1 to 6 says, In Psalm 139, verse 1 to 6 says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word of on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have etched me behind and before. And laid your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is I, I cannot attain it. Mm. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 20 says. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 20 says. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. He knows all things. And also in Romans chapter 11 verse 33 says, Romans chapter 11 verse 33 says, O the depth 
of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out mm. in job chapter 37 verse 16 says about how he knows everything in job chapter 37 verse 16 Do you know how the clouds are balanced? Do you know how the clouds are balanced? Those wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge. Have you ever thought how the balance, uh, the clouds are so balanced not falling down? Mm. Because is perfect in knowledge. And also in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 and 9 says, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Now your ways my ways says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Mm. Okay. So if you re read the uh, uh, Bible from the book of genesis and the book of revelation you can find how is knowledgeable god uh, you can find many things about him you can have more list so i have i have brought some list to you so he is the god of knowledge he has no limit for the knowledge he has no things from eternity uh, eternal uh, like eternal we can say his knowledge is without limit as i said earlier it's not like human knowledge his knowledge is perfect his eyes sees all things he knows every man's heart he knows every moment mm. he knows how to use the prophets to prophesy that the pastors and the teachers to preach and use his children he knows how to use his children to his kingdom as well so he knows to provide all things what you need in the world he knows everything he knows everything even before we pray even if, if before we open the mouth he knows very well that we are going to say this you no need to pray oh abba father you know this is my situation you know that is my situation no he knows he knows everything before you pray so um today with some incident i wanted to show that god knows everything before we know okay so first uh, incident i would like to say about enoch have you ever heard about enoch enoch okay where where can you find about enoch in the bible i need your answer i need church i need your answer sam i want to show something yes genesis as well where where uh, any other places you, you can find about enoch hebrews Mm, okay i will show it today okay enoch about the second coming of jesus right you can find about enoch in jude jude is only one book right so jude verse 14 to 15 you can find about enoch see in genesis chapter 5 verse 23 and 24 only uh, only two of uh, that word only you can find about enoch so is the son of grandson like this and uh, uh, he was with god he walked with god so god took but in any other books uh, god uh, no one did describe about enoch but see in the book of jude shall we turn to book of jude either before the revelation okay if you read verse 14 and um, 15 you can find about him okay church chapter 14 what does it says mm that god has revealed that the second coming oh wow what a wonderful see verse 14 now enoch the seventh from adam right prophesied do you know enoch is a, prof a prophet enoch is a prophet do you know about that enoch he prophesied about this man also saying behold the lord comes with 10000s of his saints to execute judgment on all to convict all uh, ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and all of the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him 
see in Genesis, uh, but see, he has revealed about what is going to happen in future. So God knows everything. Okay, Enoch. Number two, I would like to talk about the Israelites in Egypt. Okay, they were under slavery for more than 400. In some researchers say they 400. In some places you can find 430. But uh, for today, uh, today I want to show more than 400 years they were under slavery. They were waiting for someone to deliver them. They were shouting the Lord, oh, someone. Or they were thinking about if anyone can come and deliver us. But God was so silent. Not one or two days, 400 years, more than 400 years, he was so silent. But he sent Moses to deliver them. But when was this revealed the first, for the first time? That they are going to be under slavery. Do you know to whom God revealed that they are going to be under slavery? So can you turn to Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 to 14? Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 to 14. You may think oh, she has come up with so much of <laughs> stories like that. Okay, so Genesis chapter 15. Excuse me, me. Okay. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 to 14. Then he said to Abraham, I didn't say Abraham. See, Abraham, Abraham not H. Still, the name also didn't, didn't get uh, changed. Note this uh, properly. He said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in the land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom the, they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. Did you notice where God revealed that they are going to be under the slavery to Abraham before the covenant, covenant made with him. Okay, another incident I can show you because he knows everything that's what's going to happen in future. Okay, King Hezekiah, who knows King Hezekiah? God told him that he's going to die, right? You all know Stefan Stephanie in Sunday school, you might know this, even everyone knows that. So Hezekiah, God told, them, uh, told him that he's going to die through the prophet Hezekiah. He knows that he's going to die. But he prayed unto the Lord. He cried unto the Lord. So God gave him 15 years more to live. So he knows what's going to happen. But still, he uh, uh, lived for more than 15 years. Same way. Another incident I want to show you. Okay. Who knows Satrach, Meshach, Abednego? Incident. Mm. Daniel, you can find it uh, from Jan Daniel chapter 3. They were thrown into fiery furnace because of their faithfulness towards God. God knows that they are going to fall into the fire furnace. Okay? God knows that. God knows, no? Right? Because my topic is all knowing God, no? So God knows, right? Okay. But the furnace heated seven times hotter than normal. Seven times, not one or two or three. Seven times hotter than the normal. But on the perfect time, the king recognized there was a fourth man among them. So, have you ever thought what is fourth man? Who is that fourth man? Who is that fourth man? That's Jesus. I can prove it. What? Uh, in Hebrews, number four is called Dalit. Dalit, right? Listen to me properly. In Hebrew, number four, that means fourth man. Four is Dalit. It means Dalit, uh, one, two, three, four. Dalit means it's door. Dalit means door. Jesus is the door. The way to the deliverance. He was on time and glorified among the nations. So Jesus gave the, Jesus was the fourth man. Uh, you can read, uh, you can find it's a, uh, we can see the person is a son, like a son of God. 
So Jesus was there to uh, deliver them. So number four is Dalit. Dalit is door. Jesus is the door, the way to the deliverance. So he knows what happened, what is going to happen. So he glorified among the nation. So another incident I wanted to share with you. Do you know Nathaniel? Under the fig tree, Jesus saw and heard what he spoke under the tree. You can find in John chapter 1 verse 44 to 51. Nathan, uh, Nathaniel is asking, oh, how do you know what I spoke under the fig tree? I saw you. Jesus knew everything. He called, so he came and came to the ministry and he did the uh, God's work and he spread good news as well. And also another incident I wanted to show you. In John chapter 11, everybody knows about Jesus went to raise Lazarus from the dead. When he, uh, when he heard he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. On the fourth day he went near the tomb. Verses, uh, if you notice the verse for 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 41. In John chapter 11, verse 41 says, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Note this. If you read chapter 11, you can't find that Jesus prayed. You can't find any, any verses that Jesus prayed. But here Jesus saying in verse 41, Father, I thank you that you heard me. When? When? Can anyone prove me, show me the verse that he prayed in chapter 11? No. You know why? Because two days before he got the news from God, today you, you have a project, you have an assignment to raise Lazarus. So on that day he prayed. Before creating the world, he knows that he is going to raise Lazarus. So he's saying, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. See how great God, he knows everything, what's going to happen in future. Okay. Again, um, another thing I want to show you. Okay, so Jesus also, he was time element of all his ministry carefully. The people often seem to challenge his timing. They were challenged that his timing, Jesus' timing. Mary requested that Jesus to perform a miracle at a wedding at Cana. To change the water into wine. Okay, what was the response of Jesus? Church, I want your response. What Jesus said to Mary? When she asked to turn the water into wine, what was the answer of Jesus? Yes, Rachel, come. <laughs> my time, my hour has not come yet. He said, my, my time is not yet come. He's saying, my hour has not yet come. But on the perfect time, he performed the miracle. He performed the miracle. He said, my hour has not come, but he performed the miracle. Why? He knows the timing. When should the miracle has to be take place? Hmm. Okay, you can read it from John chapter 2. He knew that people will reject him in the ministry time. He knew that he would die. He knew that he will, f um, uh, that God will, that Father will raise him from the death. He knows everything. But he prioritized the scheduling time, scheduling time, because he knows everything in which the work of God was to be done. Jesus know everything, okay, my father is perfect, so I have to work according to his will. Because he is perfect in knowledge, so he knows everything. Even Jesus also obeyed, okay, because Jesus, even Jesus also don't know when he is coming back. Because he is sure about his father. Father knows when he is coming back, because he is omniscient, all-knowing God. So don't get panicked. One will say, Jesus is coming tomorrow, Jesus is coming tomorrow, don't get panicked. Father knows about everything when he's coming back. Amen. And also, mm, I'm about to quick because of the time. Even about the last days, God has revealed to the prophets, um, especially in the book of Ezekiel, Daniel, book of Revelation, what will happen in the world. Even right now, it's happening. Even for prophets, he has prophesied. Um, God has revealed them. Okay. Even um, in many people, uh, 
uh, the prophets or judges, book of kings, Psalms wrote about that Jesus will bruise the Satan on the cross and will give the victory. But first revelation as given in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Shall we read Genesis chapter 3 verse 15? What was there? Okay, we have many prophets in, um, uh, they have written. But the revelation that God is going to bruise the Satan on the cross, the revelation given in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Shall we read? Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and, the, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. See, the revelation has given in Genesis. So God knows everything what's going to happen in future. Okay. Even though before the fall of the Adam and Eve, he planned about the human's life. He knows everything about you what you do how do you think how you will react he knows everything before the fall of man okay even the disciples waited for the perfect time to receive the holy spirit he is on time he knows he, they waited to receive the holy spirit as well even though he is telling us to listen to his word my church those who are watching over the youtube even though he is telling us to listen to him Listen to him. Listen to his word and obey his word. Why? He knows that we will get destroyed if we don't listen to his word. He knows that we will get destroyed and perish. He is a loving father. He knows that if, do, if we don't listen to him, we will get perished. That's why he keep on telling, listen to him. Obey to his. Because he knows he is really concerned about us. So, um, he knows we all have needs. He knows exactly what is the situation you are going through right now. He knows about your health condition. He knows about your financial status. He knows about your painful experience. He knows about your education qualifications. He knows about your ministry or calling. You may say, oh, today I failed in my ministry, my calling. Oh, where is my church is going right now? Where is my ministry is going right now? You may think about but he knows everything. Because whom do you call is faithful. He is faithful. He is able to take over you. Okay. He knows everything about your life. You may say today, um, before closing my sermon today, um, you may say, why I am born in this world? You may say, why I born in this world? Children may say, why I born in your womb? Why I born in this family? Parents may say, why you born in my womb? Go and die, get lost. Parents, many parents have said, I have heard. Even, even my school friends have said that uh, they, uh, some of my friends, they, one of my friends is very rich. I want to say, is, she's my best friend. Uh, she's a very rich girl. Uh, I do want to say what is the background of her. She had enough of, uh, she's having still. But you know, uh, in particular situation, the parents, uh, they said you have to stand on your own. Uh, she is in abroad right now. For the part, past 13 years, even for her wedding, they, with the full of gold she was. But uh, everybody was saying they uh, took the... Uh, wedding in five star hotels even though they took the reception in abroad even though three or uh, four ceremonies happened they spent like money very vastly but all behind of this only she and her husband knew what was the scene behind that the painful thing and the, after them uh, she's my best friend so I, I know the story what is behind that she has said why are you born in my womb? Get lost and die. Can a parent say like that, even in any situation? If you're a good mother, if you're a good parent, can they say, no, no. A, a children can't say, why I born in your womb? 
children can ask in the Isaiah chapter 45, I think, if I'm not sure. Uh, the word says, you can't say why I am born because God only created us. So, don't use that word here after parents, those who are watching even. So teachers may say, uh, sorry, uh, before ending that word. So my, uh, still she's uh, suffering for, longing for the love of mother and parent. Because she's a very rich, even though she has money, even though she has a lot of things. They have so, uh, so much of um, the buildings in Colombo. She's a very rich person. But still, she was longing for the uh, love of parent. But... I will show why I want to say this. Even the teachers may say, oh, you're a fool. You can't study. You're not, you not good enough to uh, su success in your life. Why are you studying in this school? Go to any other school. Get close. Teachers may say, no. It's terrible. People may say, oh, why are I born in this country? If I born in another country, I would have a luxurious life. Like a million, I can, I, can, I can own a nice car, luxury car. You may say like that. Even though the people who got married will say, hi yo, why I got married to this person? Why I got married to this person? If I married a rich person, I would have like in this position. If I, if I married that person, I would have like this situation. We can blame many things. People may say, why I'm in this church? Why I'm doing this ministry? People may say, uh, have you ever uh, said like this? If, you have, if I have a remote in life, I would have rewind my life. I have, I have told many times when I was in school even. Um, I, don't, I, I don't like to share my personal experience here because uh, some, some in some, uh, um, uh, if Holy Spirit urge me, I will say. But I, normally I don't like to share my personal things. Um, if the uh, if the, 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 I have heard many people say, oh, if I have a remote, I can rewind and forward, <laughs> rewind and forward. Have you ever said like that if I have a remote? Don't say that, okay? Because God is in control about everything. Because he's omniscient, he's all-knowing God. Unless we run away from him, he's always good for us. Okay, so everything... Uh, he knows everything. So before closing my, um, so within uh, five or ten minutes, I will take some time and finish. So I would like to say this in Luke chapter 12 verse 7. Turn with me in Luke, Luke chapter 12 verse 7. Luke chapter 12 verse 7 says, hmm. if anyone knows, you can say the word. What does it say? Hmm. Okay, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Hmm? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Um, for girls, they like hair, right? Uh, even our boys also growing hair. <laughs> I like to grow hair. Uh, I like to grow hair. Why the why why God was telling Jesus saying that uh, incident? Why? Because every day for a human being there there will be a hair fall, right? We won't just will say uh, hair and we'll just um, we'll throw in the garbage or throw in the river. so we don't that much we don't uh, care about concern about them. Even but Jesus saying see. The word 6 says, Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. So what God wants to say is today, He knows everything about your life. He knows every moment, every movement, He knows everything. He knows about your life. Sometimes mm, uh, you may say, Sister, you don't know how, how many days I have cried on my bed. Only the pillow knows. Some quotes I've seen. Uh, only my pillow knows about my tears. 
<laughs> and uh, someone say, oh, sister, you don't know how, may, how long I was waited for my life partner. You don't know about me. You don't know how much I suffered for the school admission or a university admission. Or you may say, oh, sister, you don't know about how much I suffered to success to become a successful person in the business. You may say, sister, do you don't know how much of family issues that I'm going right now? You may say, sister, you don't know how much, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. You may say, uh, sister, you don't know how much I'm going through with this sickness. I'm carrying this burden. You may say, but before I told you, before you open the mouth even, before even you think God knows what is going to happen in future, he knows about you. He is concerned about your life. He loves you more than anything. He knows how to take care about your future. Don't get panic. Don't get panic about how would my future will be? Who is my future partner? How would my job, how would my financial status according to the country situation? No. Stay calm. Okay. I would like to close the message with a small thought for you today. Okay, church, please listen to me. Okay. How, uh, how, how many have traveled in the uh, flight? Can you raise their plan? Any other people who have flight overseas or any other? Sorry? <laughs> Where? <Yeah>. Ukraine. <laughs> I, I didn't hear. <laughs> okay. So, uh, have you, uh, do you have any experience in traveling ships? Any boats even? No, you want zoo or anything. You don't have any experience. Ah, okay. Uh, do you have any experience? <laughs> it's a silly question, but I have to ask. Do you have experience in traveling in bus? <laughs> ah, everybody has experience in traveling in bus, right? Okay. Uh, but last year we had a good experience by walking also, no? Buses because of the petrol, right? Okay. So today, of the, uh, today, um, um, just go with this thought, right? Um, if you have, just imagine, now you are in the flight. Okay, this is the plane. Church, church, cooperate with me, okay? Think this is uh, church, uh, a plane. And this is a ship. This is the bus, okay? Okay, so when um, you get in, you take your boarding pass or the ticket or for ship, I don't know, they also take ticket or pass? They take pass or something, right? To enter, okay? You will get, you will get the visa, you will take the ticket, you are so excited, oh, I'm traveling today, I'm abroad. You will take selfies in the plane, I'm near the window, I'm in the business class, oh. Oh, like that. They will say, I'm traveling. I'm traveling. The status. Oh, now we are. See the wings. Oh, see the clouds. We are, we are so excited. Even the ship, um, in the star cruise and all, uh, they will say, oh, today I'm going to um, travel in the star cruise. You know what is star cruise? It's a kind of uh, like ship, everything, every, um, um, like you can travel towards in the, you have the facilities like theaters, movie halls, restaurants and all in the Star Cruise. It's a ship. And also uh, in the bus, I don't need to say about bus. Super bright <laughs> bus. Okay, you think like this. So you all prepared for everything. You take bus, ticket, you take the boarding pass and you take the luggage and everything and you will say, okay, bye-bye and everything. You're so relaxed, right? You go and give and just sit. I want to ask you the question. Do you know who is the pilot? Is he your relation? Do you know about him? What is the qualification? Do you know? Will he take him carefully? Oh, you, the pilot. I'm so scared. Pilot is going to knock the plane somewhere else. Have you ever thought like that? Okay, okay. F flights, okay. In the ships, the captain, no. Oh. Do you know about the captain? You don't know about the captain. But in the bus, drivers, uh, drivers, I can say, you can see him. But do you know drivers? Driver is your cousin or relation? 
you don't, don't know who is driver but you just sit in the bus and just put the headphones in your head and s listen to the songs and just go and you get down to the destiny okay so why i'm saying is you relax on a plane even though you don't know the pilot you just relax you will relax on a plane even though you don't know the pilot take this thought right you relax you will relax on a ship even though you don't know about the captain right you will relax on a bus even though you don't know the driver okay so why don't you relax in your life knowing that god is in control church right i'm repeating again you re you will relax on a plane even though you don't know the pilot you will relax on a ship even though you don't know the captain you will relax on a bus even though you don't know the driver why don't you relax in life knowing that god is in control that he knows everything church given round applause to the god he knows everything give glory to him he knows everything every single act he knows everything every single act in your life he knows everything don't worry don't panic he knows every single act what you are doing what i am going to think what's going to happen he knows everything okay just with one word i want to close uh, just um, hebrews chapter 4 verse um 12 soon i'll read it hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says for the word of god is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart okay it's like a sharp edge who is word who is word jesus is word jesus knows everything he knows everything you can't say hope oh, after uh, he knows my heart but he know about he don't know about my situation no according to this word he knows everything sharper than anything his word he knows about you he knows about you he knows about you what is the situation right now you are going through he he has the answer for your problem he has the solution because his omniscient is all knowing god so just relax church all over the world who's watching right now just relax on him just trust on him he knows everything he is in control about your life stay blessed i hope this message will be a blessing to you so let's stand